This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRA Secrets, I'm going to be discussing the dangers of soy in dog and cat food. Hello you guys. For those of you who are new, welcome. Um, uh, before I get into this video, I just want to give you a little bit of update on Lewis. I'm actually just outside on my front deck and Lewis has just finished going for a walk, so I'm just gonna walk just up the trail with him. You can just see how well he's doing. He is, as you know, uh, has mouth cancer. He's actually now on, primarily just on CBD oil, which is the cannabidiol, one of the isolated ingredients from the cannabis plant, but specifically it's the therapeutic portion that is non-psychoactive. So today, I've, I've since upped his dose. He had been on a fairly low dose of one milligram for 10 pounds, so that worked on out to be 10 milligrams twice a day. I've since upped his dose to 20 milligrams twice a day, and even last night he got a little extra 10 milligrams just before bed because he seemed a little bit uncomfortable. He, I've had him on a number of different, the veterinary anti-inflammatories, wasn't really helping. Um, he was on a specific pain patch called fentanyl, that's a narcotic pain patch. Uh, wasn't giving him much pain relief. I had him on another narcotic called Tramadol, wasn't helping much. And so then I, out of, more out of anything, as much as desperation, you know, I went ahead and switched on to the CBD and he's responded so well to it. Um, four or five days ago, I, he, I seemed to be really going downhill again. He had a really rough day. And I thought, well, maybe this is it. So I just up, doubled the dose. He went from 10 milligrams to 20 milligrams of CBD and he's since bounced back again. Um, so you can have a look at him. I'm more than happy how he's responding. I'm just so happy to have this extra bit of time with him and I'm happy with all those super supportive positive comments and I'll definitely keep you updated as things progress. Let's go Lewis. So should soy be in your dog or cat's food? Well, what is it? I got some here, I just wanna show you. So here is some here, the yummy looking tofu, of which I'm not necessarily a fan for a variety of different reasons, which you're gonna hear shortly, but just have a look at it. I mean, it makes you wonder why anyone eats it. Yum, so does not, Yummy. Does that not look appetizing? There it is, this yummy looking tofu. I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. Uh. So I recently made a little trip uh, to my local veterinary practice and I went and just picked up a couple bags of Royal Cannon hypoallergenic food. Uh, this is the cat food. This is the dog food. So what I wanted to do is then just read you the ingredients of you know what's in those two particular foods and then comment a little bit about the nutritional, nutritional value of those foods themselves. So I need glasses, as many of you know. So let's start with the dog one here, the Royal Cannon Hypoallergenic Hydrolyzed Protein Food. Um, now there it is, the veterinary diet pretty pricey thing that you know, potentially your dog would need to be on for his or her life if she's got some form of food allergy and she positively responds to it. So if I'm looking at the ingredients of the, the, this canine hypo, um, we've got the first ingredient is brewer's rice, um, as you may or may not know, not a very nutritionally sound product. The second, second ingredient, hydrolyzed soy protein. Hydrolyzed soy protein. So that's that tofu I took, that soy, and they modified in some way. And, and the point, the idea is then that 
your dog's immune system doesn't recognize that, doesn't react to it. Um, third ingredient, chicken fat. Fourth ingredient, natural flavors, beet pulp, etc. I mean, that's it. So you've got rice, hydrolyzed soy, and soy being the primary protein source. So this is the dog food. Now, if we look at the cat food, this is the Royal Cannon Hypo Cat Food. Once again, if we're looking at ingredient list, the first ingredient is peas. Yeah, not many cats are eating peas in the wild. The second ingredient is duck byproduct meal. That would be remnants of duck that is ground up, turned into a meal. Third ingredient, pea protein, coconut oil, natural flavors, and then again, hydrolyzed soy protein. So there's a lot of confusing information out there in terms of soy, in terms of a whole variety of different things, be it natural healthcare, um, be it what you should be feeding your dogs or cat. Clearly it's very really conflicting, but I think it's really important for you to become informed as a pet owner, as a pet consumer, and ultimately making your own choices. You know, I'm gonna say one thing, you know, some big companies such as Hills, Mars, Royal Cannon, whichever company they own, they're gonna say something else. Your veterinarian may say something else, the breeder may something else, say something else. But really it's up to you to ultimately make sort of the most informed decision in terms of what you feel is the healthiest thing to be feeding your dog or cat. As an example, in terms of the variety of information out there, you know, I, I was doing a bit of research on this video prior to doing it, and I brought up uh, researching the Hills Pet Food and brought up a web page on their site, which I'm going to read a little bit and show you, where they talk about the benefits of soy in your pet's food. So I think I'll just show it there so you guys can see it. Those are some pretty happy looking dogs. They list a number of different benefits. Yes, it's got a number of different potential positive nutrients such as folic acid, essential amino acids, a uh, certain number of fatty acids. Um, they state that it is less allergenic for dogs than other common protein sources, you know, such as meat and dairy products. Hmm, potentially they say it's good for dogs. In the same article, they say it's good for people. Okay. And in particular, they also say it's good for cats. And this is the statement they claim as is often the case in nutrition, what's good for people is also good for cats. I mean, never mind the fact that our cats are obligate carnivores, completely different um, way of metabolism than we have. Are we like cats? Eh, well, we eat some of the same things. Are, are we obligate carnivores? No, we're not. Can we function fine, eat a vegetarian diet? Do we need to eat meat? No, we don't. Does your cat need to eat meat just to survive? Yes, he or she does. So now let's discuss some of the research which contradicts those quote unquote valid statements. Um, first of all, there's a pretty important review article published by the Journal of Pediatrics. Soy as an endocrine disruptor, um, cause for caution. Um, so and in it, they discuss endocrine disrupting compounds alter the function of the endocrine system. That's sort of the hormone system throughout our body, our pet's body, and consequently cause adverse effects. They call plant estrogens or phytoestrogens, natural plant compounds abundantly found in soy and soy products behave as weak estrogen mimics or antiestrogens. And they claim that, however, the supporting evidence that, that the consumption of these phytoestrogens, plant estrogens, is beneficial, is indirect and inconsistent. On top of that, they say that lifetime exposure to estrogenic substances, especially during critical periods of development, has been associated with the formation of malignancies and severe anomalies of the reproductive system. Phytoestrogen consumption in infants through soy-based formulas is of particular concern. Prospective epidemiological studies for the evaluation of the, of the effect of phytoestrogens alone and in combination with other estrogenic chemicals are lacking, yet adverse effects should not be taken lightly. Then there's a second study. The evaluation of the effects of dietary soy phytoestrogens on canine health 
steroidogenesis, thyroid function, behavior and skin coat quality in a prospective controlled randomized trial. The conclusions of that study, these data suggest a long-term long ingestion of soy phytoestrogens may influence endocrine function in dogs, and this could potentially impact results of studies evaluating endocrine function in dogs, although, although larger studies are needed for confirmation. And lastly, the last article I think it's important that I make reference to is a veterinarian called Dr. Lisa Pearson. Uh, her one website on cat health and nutrition is at catinfo.org.org. Uh, and this is what she has to say to soy. Soy and cat food. Soy is a known disruptor of thyroid function. If you've been reading my Feeding Your Cat, Know the Basics of Feline Nutrition, which outlines what it means to be an obligate carnivore you will understand that soy has no logical place in cat food. However, soy will increase the profit margin for pet food companies. Therefore, it is present in many cat foods, especially those made by Purina. According to one study, soy was identified in 60% of all tested cat foods at a level high enough to interfere with thyroid function. So, should you be feeding this to your dog or cat? Definitely not. I mean, ultimately what you need to do is, first of all, like, just le read the label. I mean, whatever bag, whether your veterinarian recommends it, the pet supply store recommends it, I mean, it's something that you're picking up at a grocery store, just, just take the time first to read the label. And there's a number of different things we need to talk about in terms of, of selecting a good quality dog and cat food. Um, but the focus of today's video, and in particular, don't be feeding your pet soy. So thanks you guys for watching this video on soy and dog and cat food. I hope it's helped you and sort of made you more illuminated as far as you know, making better pet food choices. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. You can do, do that by clicking that little circle in the box above. And then if you've yet to do so, I encourage you to sign up for my newsletter. And you can do that by clicking that link in the box below. And then I can, can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.